Hello everyone, thank you for stopping by. I'm going to introduce myself again here in just a second, but I just wanted to say thank you for stopping by and please subscribe if you haven't, I'm trying to help this little channel grow. And you can always visit me on Instagram, junk underscore gems for more daily. Friends, I'm so glad that you're here. Welcome to my channel, Curly Willow Acres. Um, I'm looking a little nasty today. It's been raining, it's humid, but we have needed the rain so badly. So I'm so thankful that we have it. Um, yeah, so the flowers needed it, the garden needed it. Our grass has never been yellow here, and it has been yellow because it has just really, really been dry. But today I'm going to share with you uh, some thrift flips. That's a tongue twister for me. Some uh, thing, uh, things that I've thrifted, and I'm kind of flipping them to kind of go with my decor. Some vintage things that I got really cheap, and I'm gonna uh, paint them and uh, sand them down and add a little techniques and stuff to it. So I will take you along and show you how I do that. That's for this week. And then also I'm gonna put up my 4th of July decor for you too. I'll have that out in another video too for you to see. And yeah, thank you all for subscribing. Thank you for your sweet comments, we appreciate it. This last week was a very big week for us in our home because um, my husband had a scan for his cancer which they said he would never be cancer free so this scan was very important because the doctors are thinking they can do something else for him um, when this video goes up I'll really won't know if they're going to be able to do that or, or if he'll need to continue chemo but um, your prayers are always appreciated for him we appreciate that more than anything just the prayers and uh, God is good we know that he's here no matter what so we will keep hanging in there and keep pushing along but now on to my thrift flips and hopefully you like them and it gives you a little bit of inspiration and helps you to think outside the box a little bit thank you bye bye okay so first thing we're going to start out with is this picture frame I got um, I got it for 25 cents at a yard sale so I thought that was a pretty good deal but on the picture frame and then you'll see corbels coming up here soon that I got at a yard sale too I put a little bit of Vaseline in certain areas where it would get the natural wear and putting that Vaseline on helps uh, when you go to put the paint over it it doesn't stick as well so then when you sand the wood shows through these are some corbels I got a whole pile of different corbels for three dollars at a yard sale <coughs> excuse me I thought that was a great deal but I'm putting the Vaseline on it and then I'll just let it dry just a tad bit not much and then I'll uh, start applying my uh, chalk paint I use the Waverly uh, plaster I believe is what it is the chalk paint and I use that on the picture frame I give that two coats I think it was two coats because I'm going to sand it off and show the wood underneath anyway and then the corbels I give two or three coats too because I'm not trying to be a perfectionist here because I'm going to sand off for distressing anyway because that's the way I like my things is distressed and vintage looking so I'm going to Keep getting putting that on and then put I'll put the second coats on both of them and that little pot back there is another I think I got that at a thrift store that's going to be up next but I got that for just a couple dollars and I love the little feet on it you'll see that in just a few minutes here but I'm showing my second coat here and getting that all real good and then starting with the cor corbels, I don't know why they're, there we go, now we're on screen. I'm sorry, I'll try to do this better next time, but, you know, beginner here. So, doing the best I can. Putting that, that's the first coat on the corbels, and I've already put the Vaseline in different areas you've seen. And then I will um, put the second coat on the corbels, and then I let everything dry for a couple hours. Um, it's been so dry here instead of humid in Michigan lately that I was able to, it dried really fast because I don't have air conditioning up in my craft room. So I uh, enjoy it when it's a little drier and warmer outside. But there I go. I'm getting it, trying to get it in all that. I use one of these cheap chip brushes just from the hardware store. It's like 59 cents. Gets in all the nooks and crannies really good. I like that. And then I'm starting on the second one of the corbels. I thought I skipped ahead, but apparently I didn't. Sorry that you have to watch this and it's boring, but let me know in the comments below which one is your favorite um, flip that I did. And here I am. I'm putting the chalk. I use the same chalk paint on this one. I didn't use any Vaseline on this. Um, it just it has the cutest feet. It has all this ornate stuff on it. 
Yeah, it's got grapes, but I love them. Handles and the feet just got me. And for two bucks, I thought that was a pretty good deal. So I just went ahead and put, I think, I think it took two coats. I do believe it took two coats. Because I'm trying to get down in all the nooks and crannies too. This is why I like the chip brush. It just, you're going to smash that thing right down in there and everything and get it really good. So I do all that. And, and then I come back and do a second coat on it. And get it covered as good as I can. I, again, I'm not looking for perfectionist perfectionism. I'm looking for vintage looking, which is a vintage, but it didn't have a label or anything on it. Like it was a collector's item. Um, and then, you know, I like the rust to show through. I like the dark to show through because I will sand it just a little bit. And I'm going to put some uh, rub and buff in some of the details just to bring out the details. I think that'll really help that too after I get it painted. I think it looks better white. Depends, you know, your taste and everything but this goes better with my home decor or cottage farmhousey cottage garden cottage core and um i'm going to put a plant inside it so i thought that would be cute i always like little urns like this to put all my plants in urns or soup terrains that works really good for plants but anyways i didn't realize i showed you all this painting so i'm sorry oh goodness gracious there we go. I'm getting it getting it good. I wanted to get them handles really good because it's got a lot of little carving detail on the handles. And then around that lip, underneath the lip, has some carving. And I really wanted that to show too and come out. There we go. Still painting for you. Hopefully you like watching somebody paint, I guess, because that's what you're getting here. I apologize for that if it's boring to you. <clears throat> But I love the chalk paint, too, because that sands off so nice and easy. And you don't have to, you know, prep everything. You don't have to sand everything ahead of time. And I want to get a little bit on the inside in case you see that above the plant. And then uh, I'll come in. I'll do a second coat. And then I'll add the rub and buff, too, to it. I think I'm looking for the rub and buff here. Nope, I'm getting more paint. Sorry. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. There we go. We're... Uh, Putting some paint on there. And if you're wondering, we haven't heard from the doctor yet on the test results for my hubby that I mentioned before in the introduction. We're still waiting, which is very unusual. Usually we hear by now. So I don't know. In his case, usually no news is good news. So we're going to go with that today. We're just going to go with that. And there I'm getting the second coat all done. It's looking nice, I think. And still see a little bit showing through, but that's okay. We like that all right. And then after that dries, I'll dries, I will come in with the rub and buff. It looks like I'm just playing with it here, but I'm not. I honestly am adding something to it. And here, uh, that's what I did. I sanded first. I'm sorry, I apologize. I sanded first, came in with the sanding block from Dollar Tree. It's got a little bit of like braiding around the edge, so I sanded that off and just letting some of that show through. <laughs> and then in some of the leaves there, and especially on the feet, I want that to show some of the rust and the pantina underneath. It was so fun to do this. I haven't done anything like uh, an urn like this or a planter or whatever you'd want to call it before in metal with the chalk paint. So there I'm uh, sanding because if you can see, there's yeah all the detail underneath there. I'm trying to get that to show through. So I'm sanding that just lightly with the edge of the sander to get that to come through and now I'm going to apply the rub and buff in antique gold I used so I just put that in certain areas all over it just to, it kind of just brought out you'll see in the end pictures it just kind of gave it a little pop I think just kind of made it look a little uh a little more elegant or something I don't know but it really brought out the detailing down there see how it brings out that curved curved part, the braided part, and then the handles. And then I just keep applying that everywhere. Or not everywhere, but in certain spots. See how it brings out that detail right there? You, can, you don't even really notice it until you put that rub and buff on, and then it comes right out. I love that. And rub and buff comes in all different colors if you, if you haven't ever used it. And here I'm going to sand off the picture frame. And in them corners is some little ornate uh, moldings. And so I'm going to sand them real good. I want the wood to show through on them. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of, little bit of rub and buff in the corners of that. 
And you'll see in the end pictures how that really brings it out good. It makes it look real pretty. I was hoping after getting this frame, it was only 25 cents, so I wasn't losing much, but I had a print at home and I was hoping that would go in it. And you'll see in the end if it did or not, but yeah, there, see, I think it turned out really pretty. And then I'll add the rub and buff to the corners of that. And then um, I'll go ahead and sand off the corbels and you'll see in the corbels, especially you'll see where the Vaseline was put and how easily that comes off. There we go. We're putting it in the corners and I don't do much on this. And as you can tell, I need more rub and buff. And I've had this thing for probably two years. It has used, been used so much and lasts so well. It goes so far. I even did my kitchen lights with this stuff. One tube, not even a tube of that. So it really goes. You don't think it's going to because you just get this little pencil, pencil end piece. But oh my goodness, it goes so far. It's wonderful. And it's inexpensive, under $10. So, and it really brings out, helps bring out all that detailing. And now I'm going to sand the corbels. See how pretty that looks. I was very pleased with that. And then here's the corbels, and then I'll show you where when I sand it off where the Vaseline was, it really brings it out. And then, um, I guess I should have sped this up for you. I'm sorry. And there we go. Right in there is where I had the Vaseline and stuff, and it really, really comes off nice and just looks really really worn and cool. See how that looks? That's exactly what I wanted. Very happy with that. <clears throat> Next up, I'm going to show you them all styled. And please leave a comment below and let me know which one is your favorite and if you would have done something different with them. I always love to hear other people's ideas. That's always so fun because, you know, sometimes it sparks your uh, imagination too and gets your mind thinking in a different way. And that's always fun. So as soon as I'm done here, you're going to see that.